Right, just something else I wanted to show you on the visible satellite imagery that I, I, I saw this morning. Um, here's the timestamp down in here. Come on, come on. Uh, 1515 UTC uh, on the 10th of April. And it's, it's, it's all of these squares. See how we've got this gridded square shape. What I don't know is if the origin from this was via chemtrails or not. Whether these flights, whether this patterning was a result of previous flights having been laid out by the trails. My guess is that it's probably that they were. And then they turned into these feathery cirrus clouds that we see here. Nevertheless, it is uh, quite, an, uh, quite a pattern indicating the hand of man on this. We move into western Oklahoma this morning. You can see all, the, all of these ripples in arcs, arcs, they're arcs. They're like uh, concussion waves or percussion waves out ahead of the bow of, bow of a ship. More waves, a little finer scale here. As so we get out near Waco, Texas, and then with the line of thunderstorms uh, arcing from south central uh, Kansas all the way through Oklahoma, we'll come into this evening in a nice circular pattern here, oval, if you will. And then there's something happening outside of Hayes, Kansas, uh, with this. Uh, just with these odd shapes. These are pretty much undescribable and we're looking at a scale that you just don't get on your evening news. It just doesn't happen. You don't get to look at stuff this fine in detail. Everything's cartooned out and, and grayscaled and it just isn't there. All the texture top the thunderstorms that are now rolling through the national state down into western Louisiana and then our, our, uh, where our cirrus clouds, our cubed cirrus clouds have kind of filled in uh, with much more moisture coming in from Mexico and then spilling out across the Gulf of Mexico. And then the lower end of our storm, the far southern end, all of this rippling. These are unnatural patterns, especially at this scale. And of course, we talked about holes yesterday, and here are all the holes. Probably two dozen of them on the western edge of this particular cloud formation. And then a few on the eastern side to close it down, to button down the cloud formation. Something else I wanted to show you was out in the Pacific. You can see the California coastline, the Bay Area here, and all of these trails embedded within the marine layer. These are not from aircraft. If they are, they are low-flying sub-hunter aircraft, um, leaving an intentional trail or condensing out uh, particulates in the atmosphere. Um, but otherwise, I would tend to believe that they're more likely ship trails. And if they are low-flying aircraft trails, then they're probably sub-10,000 feet and more likely sub-8,000 feet in that bottom two kilometers. And so we're, we're seeing them kind of rolling across their interest in the western edge of, of this hole, western edge of this hole, western edge of this hole, one caught coming out of, the, out of the top of this formation, one coming in on the western edge of this hole here. One coming along and arcing through. You see this bend here, another bend here. It's running along that same angle. These are the same kind of patterns we see very clearly in the day-to-day -day chemtrail activity. Here's where, what they looked like at early this morning. This was 9 a.m. mountain time. And you can see the numerous trails. So they're engineering with chemtrails in the sky. And it's not necessarily that these trails in the sky are directly impacting the weather, though I'm certain they do. It's just that these are increasing the reflectivity of the marine layer, of the ocean marine layer, but they're also giving them from space the ability to see just how this marine layer is moving. So here's another set of tra trails. Let's come on in closer. All right, just wanted to show you the animation of how these ship trails moving off the coast of California. Kind of see them down in here, and they're moving too slowly to be aircraft, so they must be ship-based, something doing 20 to 20 to 30 knots tops. But they are working in a concert, and there has to be dozens of them, because there will be days we've seen in the past, we'll likely show you in the future, where there are many of them, that the ship count has got to be um, under 100, but more than 50. Up here, off the coast of Oregon, you can see this kind of gentle cloud coming through. And we'll go to another vantage point to have another look at that. And right here. And when we go to the water vapor imagery, we know these trails sequester water, they attract water. And here we have them working on this small little storm. We'll go to the GFS once again, and it's this impulse right here that they keep running trails across so they can gauge just how this storm is deepening, intensifying, 
and who knows what kind of application they're doing it. Are they digging it deeper on the western side or putting up resistance ahead of it to slow it down? It's hard to know until the event is through and we can compare what the models initialized versus what eventually happened.